All right, what is up? Mixing tips from p5audio.com. This time we're going to cover modern rock mixing production. For my subject matter, I am using the Meteoric Rock Hybrid Construction Loop Sets from p5audio.com. That's a mouthful, but trust me, these loops are so worth it. 34 multi-track construction loop sets. Here's what they look like on your computer. Each one, each loop set actually contains all the individual parts, separate, separated drum tracks, guitars, bass, synths, record scratches, all that modern stuff. And then each idea is broken down into three parts. So I'm using loop set five for this demonstration, uh, which has a bridge, has a hook, has a verse. And by the way, even if you don't own these loop sets, you can still take these settings that I'm going to show you, apply them to your own rock tracks, and make them sound bigger and more professional. So let's get mixing. Okay, so I imported my loop sets, and I got myself a verse, got myself the hook, and got myself the bridge. And let's audition these. Let's hear what the verse sounds like first. <laughs> All right, that's my verse. My hook is this. And my badass bridge sounds like this. Okay, so how did I get those sounds? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Get your pen and paper. Okay, so for the kick drum, what I got, and by the way, before uh, I tell you these settings, let's just listen to the kick drum without the processing. So take this EQ off, take this plug-in off, and here, here's what you got. Good kick to work with. So you got to fatten it up with some compression. And by fattening up, I'm adding a 5 to 1 compression ratio, negative 15 dB, fast attack, fast release, and lots of makeup gain, 10 dB. I'm also gating this kick below negative 15 dB, fast attack, fairly fast release. For EQ, I am boosting 52 hertz, 3 kilohertz, and 7 kilohertz, because you got to brighten up this kick so it pierces through the mix. Next step is to double the kick. So I just took this kick line and I drug it down to this track. Settings on this one, I'm rolling a little bit of low end off so I don't have too thuddy of a kick. I could probably even low, roll off a little bit more. Rolling off below uh, 34 hertz, adding a little high end around the 3 kilohertz and 6 kilohertz range. Got another compression on there. This time I'm compressing 8 to 1. And for this particular line, I added a quadra fuzz from Nuendo 3.0 to add a little bit of distortion to the kick, just to give it a little different timbre. All right, so for the snare. Great snare to work with. Let me A-B it. This is with all the settings on it, with compression and with EQ. Without, it sounds like this. And to compress it, do an 8 to 1 ratio, negative 10 dB. Uh, for my gate, I'm gating below negative 30 dB. Fast attack on this and a fairly slow um, release. For EQ, I'm boosting a whole bunch of stuff. Giving it a little bit of weight so I'm boosting up 76 hertz. And then you got to brighten it up so it sticks out in the mix. Doing, 40, or doing 4 kilohertz and 9 kilohertz. And incidentally, that is just the snare top. You still got a snare bottom to mix. But before I bring in that snare bottom, I'm going to take this snare track and I've duplicated it to this line. So this right here is the same snare line. But with this time, I've taken that snare line and I've pitched it down about a minor third. Fills it up a little bit better. Okay, so now you're going to add the snare bottom. Snare bottom, not boosting any high end. It's already a high pitch frequency. Boosting a little bit of mid, around 24 hertz. For compression, 
gating it again, about negative 30 dB, negative 28 dB exact. Doing about a seven to one ratio at negative eight threshold to compress it. Fast attack, fast release. Now for my toms, all three of them. And let me go in and just solo this film. Loop it right here. There you go. All right, so you heard what that sounds like. Let me just explain to you what I did. Okay, so for the high tom, compression, compress everything. Compression, eight to one, negative 19 dB. Gotta add some gate to it. Gotta get the rest of them drum parts out of there. Doing a little bit of roll off on the EQ below 20 hertz just to get some of the rumble out. Boosting the high end um, frequency at four kilohertz and doing a little slight high frequency roll off on um, at about 25 hertz mainly to get the snare and the overheads out of that particular track same goes for the mid tom um, same compression rolling off the lows and the highs just slightly and then for the low one I'm rolling off a lot of this high end stuff I want to get all that snare that hi-hat those overheads out of this particular track um, for some reason, the mics really picked it up heavily on this one. And then just to bring out the punch of this low tom, I am boosting the um, 115 hertz frequency. All right. Now for the overheads. Overheads are nice and easy. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I compressed these. <clears throat> and I did not. All I did for these, just big time roll off um, below 168 hertz just getting the th the the thud of the kick and the toms out of there I don't want that in there I want all shine on my overheads all right so those drums let's hear what they sound like all together check it out okay all the drums are sounding together and I've taken all of these drum tracks that you see right here all of these and they're all being bussed to their own drum channel and on that drum channel I am boosting the high frequency just to brighten them up because all that compression can kind of muddy up your sound a little bit and then I'm compressing all the parts all the drum parts together a 4 to 1 ratio negative 13 dB don't need to do any auto gate added a little bit of um, makeup gain to it 4 dB just to punch it up and give it some more focus and let's actually go through an A B that. So drums without EQ and compression. That's without the compression and EQ. Add some EQ and some compression. So much more focus. Incredible. All right, very good. So now let's move on to our bass. 